Hello and welcome to Talking It History, the podcast where we, Matt and Max, talk about works of alternate history, alternate history scenarios, and history in general. Matt, I gotta tell you, I'm extremely excited about this episode today. Oh yeah, I am too. Because today's episode is entirely about the Spike TV alternate history pilot, the episode for the series that never was. This episode was actually a suggestion from a fan of ours, Ayad. Ayad, thank you so much. He emailed us at talkingtohistory at gmail.com. Okay, Spike TV alternate history special. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness. I remember in the lead up to this, I was thinking, could could we really do an episode entirely about this special? I mean, I know it was dumb, but was it that dumb? And we had talked about it in the bad alternate history episode a little bit. Right. But we we were working off of recollections five years old at that point. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, this, I think, yeah, came out in 2011. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's been a while. We didn't remember all of it. Right. We did not remember all of it. There was a lot of things we did not remember as we found out tonight. Earlier tonight, we watched this and we're just completely blown away. We could not believe how dumb this was. It really reached another level. Honestly, we probably shouldn't have been surprised. This is Spike TV we're talking about here. They're not known for their historical accuracy. That's true. I appreciate that they try to foray into this. Oh, oh, I very much appreciate it. This was highly entertaining. Yeah, this was this was something else. We've been singing its praises. Let's let's start talking about it though. Okay, okay. So first off, it posits that the Allies could have lost World War II. Hey, that's not completely ridiculous. That's possible. But the way that they posit that the Allies could have lost World War II, starting off D Day. The Allies lose D-Day, but why? Why do they lose, Matt? Well, they lose because the Germans show up with their Me-262 jet fighters and not only shoot down apparently every single Allied plane (laughs) of the thousands above the invasion force, but then strafe the people on the beach and sink the invasion boats. That's right. They have jets. So that means they they just win at everything. Apparently. Apparently, that's just... It, it's so interesting that Max and I have noticed in some of this alternate history, there's almost this this trope, this trend of where it's like, if the ME-262 is only handled in a slightly different way, the war is just over. Not counting anything else about troop numbers and supplies and the quality of men and materiel. No, no, no. As long as they just have this special jet fighter... Everything is just dandy. And it comes up constantly in alternate history. Constantly. Mm -hmm. It's like this panacea that just wins everything for them. And I get it because it was an incredibly advanced fighter. It was more advanced than anything the Allies had when it was released. And it was used in real life. But... Mm -hmm. It wasn't as effective as people thought. It's just not a... It, just because the Germans have more of them, apparently, which they apparently have a lot in this <laughs> special, that doesn't mean you win the whole battle, let alone the whole war. It, it, it's almost like the ME-262 is like the... It's, it's the secret weapon. It's the thing that just that instantly wins. It's the menace that, that wipes out the enemy. It's like as if... Patton is like in his bathroom and he's shaving and he and he looks up and he hears something behind him and he wipes off part of the mirror and then oh my god there's an ME262 <laughs> behind him. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just it just takes the whole Wunderwaffe concept to just a whole another level. Yeah. So the D-Day invasion is defeated, and then it jumps ahead to June 1945. <laughs> and like, these, wait a second. <laughs> so it jumps ahead to June 1945. There's two U-boats surface off the coast of the United States, towing platforms carrying V-2 missiles, and they launch these V-2 missiles at New York and Boston. And both of these V-2s have nuclear weapons on them. They have atom bombs, and they destroy these two cities and then the Americans sign a, an unconditional surrender giving up entirely to the Germans. Well, I don't even know where to begin with <laughs> this whole year jump forward. So did the Germans decide, oh yeah, we defeated D-Day, like what a great victory. Are we going to do Operation Sea Lion now four years later? Have they invaded Britain? Um, yeah, the British are just never mentioned. It's just no... Brit- British are never mentioned? Italy is never mentioned? Yeah, the Americans and the, the British captured Rome on June 5th, 1944, the day before D-Day. And of course, the most egregious one, Russia never mentioned. The Soviet Union. In June of 1944, as of D-Day, the Soviets are overrunning huge chunks 
of the German army. And on June 22nd, they launch Operation Migration, which in a month and a half destroys an entire German army group. So the, I guess the, the ME-262s have also defeated uh, the Russian army, right. apparently, too. Uh, J- Jukov was like in his car and, and he couldn't start the engine. <laughs> and he was he was very worried. He was looking around and he saw him in the rearview mirror. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I don't know how he found me, but he found me. <laughs> Uh, it, these are things that they just completely ignore. And I know they all had only like 22 minutes or so to work with this. That's, that's true. I to mean, do this special, but like, come on. So, like, so, okay. One thing you have to keep in mind, this is Spike TV. Yeah. <laughs> they have to make it as bombastic and ridiculous and memorable as possible, or there won't be an audience for it. So they have to, mm-hmm. they, they have to do dumb things. Well, okay. The, it has to be, Ridiculous, but it doesn't necessarily have to be totally dumb. They should have mentioned Russia. They really should have. Yeah, they, they need to deal with that. They should have taken thirty seconds out of out of some guy slitting the throat of a Nazi riot cop, and maybe mention Russia at some point. <laughs> just uh, good. any explanation, please. Yeah, well, it just because the Russians basically defeated, for the most part, defeated the Germans, and I guess it's just reinforcing this concept that we have in the United States that apparently World War II was just, there's something going on in Europe. And then on June 6, 1944, we landed. And then, you know, in May of 1945, we defeated the Germans and there was the Battle of the Bulge and whatever. But like that completely ignores the fact that the Russians just did all the, you know, eight out of 10 German soldiers died on the Eastern Front. The scale of the Eastern Front on its own would be the largest war ever fought if you just severed it from the rest of World War II. Everything about this just neglecting the most important thing and, and they just show no real historical research so like here's a quick point in the d-day scene when it shows the americans being strafed by the me 262s there's a black soldier on the beach but there were no integrated american army units at all in june of 1944 and i don't believe there are any black soldiers on the beaches at d-day i may be wrong but as far as i know there were certainly units were not integrated mm. and so that's what it, the point is is that we're not angry about that we're just trying to point out is that that is something that a little bit of very easy historical research would have shown but apparently that's not even <laughs> done here and also the nazi atomic bomb program apparently in one year has managed to complete an atomic bomb small enough to fit on a v2 rocket and They get it to the United States. Apparently, the U.S. isn't searching for German submarines. After D-Day, they just, everyone was just sitting around. They're like, we're at war, but we're just not going to really try anymore, I guess. Especially submarines that are towing gigantic V-2 launch launch platforms. platforms That would be moving unbelievably slowly. If that was even a thing they could really work with. Yeah. Like V-2 launch programs in the ocean that they could use accurately. Is the V-2 rocket underwater the entire time? I don't do, do know. Do they need a companion vessel with a crane to put... It's <laughs> dumb. It's just dumb. This and is it, really dumb. This is really dumb. And I know they try to explain how these things really happen, but like they talk about the first example of a form of nuclear fission happened for, I think, the first time that someone ever split an atom was in 1938 in Germany. Well, that's all well and good, but that doesn't mean that they can just develop a program starting in 1942 or 44 and be like, okay, we're ready to go. That ignores the fact that many of their best scientists, we talked about this in another episode, who were Jewish, had fled to the United States or Britain, Mm -hmm. the fact that Germany, who is currently fighting a two-front war, have enough resources. I mean, the amount of money and manpower the Americans had to throw into the Manhattan Project to succeed within four, roughly four years. Just the Germans, I don't think they have the ability to do this. You need uranium. You need heavy water. You Mm -hmm. need uh, uh, cyclotrons. Cyclotrons. You need a a very large research base. I mean, I don't know how many, the equivalent of billions of tens of billions of dollars the Americans spent at that time on the Manhattan Project. The Germans couldn't have done this. And also maybe without the allies knowing about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be very easy for the allies to target any of these locations and wipe them out. Like, like for instance, in real life uh, in Norway, the heavy water plants were attacked. Yes, um, but apparently the ME-262 must just shoot down every plane that gets there because it's right. just this panacea. <laughs> but so the point is, okay, June 1945, the Americans surrender. And also we want to point out, good point made by Ayad, is that FDR in this surrenders. You know, FDR died in April 1945 in real life. His health had been getting progressively worse throughout the war, and he was in pretty bad shape in 1944, and that's with the Americans doing well, but I assume in a world in which D-Day has been defeated, um, his health probably would have gone down even quicker, so just great point. Thank you for pointing that out to us, because, you know, uh, so yeah, and then so America surrenders, apparently without any other effort, 
And then apparently the Germans have enough troops to occupy Europe Maybe the Soviet Union in the United States. I mean, just, uh, and Britain too. Don't forget apparently about Britain. Britain. Well, they, that's something. I mean, <laughs> it, it just so Germany is instantly winning, and then they're talking about people are going to start the resistance against the Germans, and yeah, maybe I guess. But then there's also just some glaring errors, like there's a Glock on that's a right. table in this 1945. Like, come on. <laughs> and then in the, the next scene, someone has a Colt 45. So I well, mean, clearly, what's going on here, people? Oh boy. Uh, but we we skip forward in time. And that, that happens in the show. It skips forward like yeah. 65 years. Present day, we got a guy who looks like the guy from House of Cards giving a speech. They're trying to mimic and show how things would have changed, but they have like, I think we mentioned this the other episode, they have like glasses. They look at someone and they're like, oh, that instantly, that guy's a Jew. <laughs> That's how right. do I know that? <laughs> like a Secret uh, Service guy's looking at a map and like little stars of David show up and they like pick out a guy from the crowd. Why is this Jewish guy at this Nazi rally? <laughs> what are you doing? They, Google is called Gerbil. That's right. They have Facebook. It's called Fast Page. Oh, someone's typing in a query on what appears to be Ask Jeeves or something equivalent, saying, I think my neighbor is a Jew. <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, what? Multiple times in this, there's like a riot in Times Square, and you see an Apache helicopter come in and shoot people with machine gun like it was the opening of the film The Running Man. Yes. That's right. I mean, and then also it has like flashbacks as this is happening to the 1950s, and Hitler is throwing out the first pitch at the World Series. <laughs> He's putting his hands in the cement at the Hollywood Theater. It's just like, hmm. what uh, is going on they here? They should have gone further with this. Like, Hitler visits Hawaii and does the hula. Perhaps Hitler shows up in Miami and starts playing beach volleyball. <laughs> I mean, that would be just as, as believable as the rest of the stuff in this episode. Oh, goodness. So it's like the modern day, and they're trying to like mimic what exists now, but just put a German Nazi spin on it. And it just, yeah. it's and just so, it's just goofy. That's the best word I could use about it. It's just goofy, and Hitler's face is on the oh, Mount Rushmore. Oh, and just, man. <laughs> just the best part about the whole thing. Oh, man. I didn't remember this at all. And it's just sublime. Is it? At the very end of the show, they show Mount Rushmore again with Hitler's face on it. Then you hear like a beeping and then it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yay, we win. <laughs> Hitler's face isn't on this mountain anymore. It's over. <laughs> we can all go home now. Oh, goodness. It just, mm. <laughs> overall, you can get the point is that it just is like they decided to do everything and just do it wrong. Just do it completely. But, it's especially bad, like looking at this in retrospect after seeing Man in the High, high Castle. Yeah, Man in the High we, Castle has just put this to shame. Like, okay, the concept of Nazis defeating America, totally ridiculous. We yeah. don't need to get into how yeah. dumb that is. Mm -hmm. It's really dumb. We've talked about it before. But if it's you're dumb. gonna do that, do it well. And Man in the High Castle does it as well as you can. As well as you possibly could. Yeah. This does it as poorly as you possibly could. <laughs> it's campy could. and goofy, but I have to say, Max, yes, this was done poorly and it's goofy, but boy, oh boy, were we entertained for 20 minutes. I, I, this was the hardest I've laughed in a while watching this. Yes. I could just, not believe what I was seeing. So this is as far from good alternate history as it gets, but when you talk about entertaining, two thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs resoundingly up. Absolutely. <laughs> and we just want to say, we get it. Alternate history as TV is really tricky because they have to balance out hardcore in-depth history with entertainment. But they just they just turn the dial up to 11 on entertainment and down to about 0.25 on history. But like, like if I was doing this kind of thing, I probably would have maybe backed off a little bit on the Nazis conquering America thing and talk about Operation Sea Lion and, you know, that kind of stuff. Or, or maybe focus more on more Wunderwaffe stuff. Stuff, but not Nazis conquer America. It's just easy. It's low hanging fruit. It's low. It's so low hanging. It's too easy. Yeah. Yeah. I know the series didn't go on, obviously, because God. I can only imagine like what the next episode would be. Well, they hinted at in one of them, like dinosaurs were still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's right. Yeah. Or it's like, what if the South won the Civil War? That's, I yeah. can only imagine how that one would have. Well, there out. would have been an astronaut on the moon and he would have had a Confederate flag. Yes. Well, obvious in this one, of course, how could we forget the yeah. common trope? There's a guy with a swastika on the moon, of course. How could That's, we? Yeah. How could that they like, leave that one out? Yeah, von Braun helped America put a man on the moon, so obviously Germany would do it at the exact same time in this. The exact this, same way. Yeah, the exact same. Just way. oh boy, but jeez, oh, we've had our fun, I guess, talking about this. But if you want to, if you really into alternate history, you want a good laugh. There you go. Well, uh, thank you again, Ayad, for the uh, recommendation to do this, and I'm glad that we talked about this because there's a lot to work with. 
But um, I think that's, that's we're finishing up. So that this is Matt signing off. And this is Max signing off. Thanks for listening.